In this video, I'm going to give you my top five tips on making Weight Watchers work for you. Uh, if you're new to my channel, hi, my name is Biz. I'm just about to cut a watermelon. Uh, but I have lost 34 pounds on Weight Watchers in the last two and a half years. And I did that by making uh, Weight Watchers my lifestyle and not a diet. But the number one thing I had to do in January of 2022 you know, every it's January, everyone's got like new year, new me is I had to ditch the timeline of how long it was going to take me to lose the weight. That's the first thing I did had to do because every year for years and years and years, I would say on January 1st, I was going to lose 20 pounds by my March birthday. That never happened. I might lose 13. I might lose eight, but if I didn't meet that goal, then I'd say, Oh, this isn't working for me. And I give up and then eat like an asshole for days, weeks, and months. So how to get rid of how long it's going to take me to lose the weight. Uh, the other thing I had to do is make the plan work for me. Um, I think it was the plan that was two ago on Weight Watchers where if you ate a cup of vegetables, you got an, um, an extra point. And so I found myself eating like salads for breakfast just so I could get like two extra points so that I can reward myself with his Snickers at the end of the day. And that was just dumb. That was just so stupid. So make it work for you. Um, I have tacos three times a week. I have pizza twice a week. I have chicken nuggets and fries once a week. So it's all within my points. Uh, and I just have to make it work. So if I have, let's just say a 15 point lunch, well, then I have to adjust the other two meals around it. And then it all, it all works out. Uh, whereas before, if I had a 15 point meal or even a 20 point meal or even more, uh, I would tell myself that I just had no willpower and that I would um, just give up and then just eat junk for a day, a week, a month before I got like back on. And the next thing is I also had to um, get rid of the all or nothing mentality. Like who, who says that you have to get 10,000 steps, journal, meditate, meal prep, do your job, uh, all those things every single day. And I could keep those balls in the air for you know a little bit but the second one dropped on the ground I that's all I thought about and I was like oh well I can't even can't even do that so I just do the best I can every single day that's all I can do and it just you know the, yesterday's gone tomorrow's not here I just have to focus on today um oh fine yeah that, that's the other thing I, I always have to if I were in previous how what am I gonna say in previous um years I either do really good with food and not good with the exercise or really good with the exercise and not food. But I had to separate the two because I thought that if I exercise and my Apple Watch told me that I burned 500 calories, that I could eat an extra 500 calories. That does not work that way. So I've had to separate food from, let me just, can we see how good this, it's November. And look at how good that, that watermelon is. Um, I can't. Food and, and exercise has to be separate, but I have to do them both consistently. And um, I found swimming, love swimming, and I've been strength training since February. So I'm really proud of myself uh, for that because um, it's, I know that as I get older, I'm 56, that I'm gonna need that um, muscle so that if I drop something on the ground, I can pick it up, that I can empty the dishwasher and put dishes away. Maybe someday I'll have kitchen cabinets. I don't know. Uh, but uh, just find something that you like. And it doesn't have to be aggressive. You know, there's a million YouTube videos out there. I'll leave a link below. I have some of my favorite YouTube videos that I do because um, I'm really picky about my YouTube videos. They can't talk too much and it has to be really good music. Um but yeah, so uh, just find something you do. And walking is the cheapest and easiest thing you can do. You can do it in your house. You can do it around your, your block. You don't need a gym membership. And it, my friend Andrew, I'll leave his link down below too, uh, has lost 180 pounds, mainly walking. Obviously changing his diet as well, but walking was his only form of exercise. Do you remember when Weight Watchers had their um, colored plans? I think it was green, blue, and purple. Uh, I said I was on Team Turquoise, and so my friend Morgan gave me this mug because uh, I said Team Turquoise, everything is zero points. And if I mentioned that in stories at the time, people are like, wait, what plan is that? How, how are you on that plan? Uh, so it just makes me laugh every time I use this mug. But here's another thing that you're not going to want to do, but you have to, is track. So I have tracked every single day since December 26, 2021. And there's, there's times when I was traveling that I had minus 80 points for a day, not a week, a day. 
uh, like when I was in Greece, I was eating a lot of cheese and, and stuff like that, but it all evens out over time. And it, at the end of the day, it's just data, but you can see how your patterns, and if you had a loss, you can look back and see, okay, maybe I had more protein this week. Maybe I had a little bit more fiber. Um, and now um, by the time, by December of 2024, everyone should have at the bottom of their app, uh, all the macros, and it'll tell you how many grams of protein, uh, fiber, carbs, and I can't remember what, the, oh, sodium is the other one. Uh, the other day I had pickles and deli ham and stuff like that. I think I had almost 4,000 milligrams of sodium. So that's another thing. If your scale is up, it could be just ex ex excess sodium. Um, but anyway, that's besides the point, but you do have to track and it doesn't really take all that time, much time. And I tend to eat a lot of the same things. So I just have meals that I've already just in the app, you can build a meal and then it just goes, I can just find it and add it instead of adding, adding like two eggs, one slice of bacon, an English muffin. It's, it just says English muffin breakfast and it has all the things in there. Although I think if you do that, I'm not sure if that will, no, that should, that should go to your macros. The only thing it won't do is if you um, quick add something, like let's just say I have pizza and I know it's 10 points, I can't just put in pizza at 10 points because then it won't know what the macros are for any of that. Um, I kind of went on a side note there. It's okay. That's how my brain works. Um, and so the last thing, bit of advice uh, is just to set realistic goals. If you haven't been very active, don't don't try to get 10,000 steps right out of the gate. Let's try, let's get 2,000 and build from there. Um, and don't you know meal prep 18 meals for you to use in the next six days. Uh, only like on day two to be like, I don't want to eat that. So lately I have been pre meal prepping things, not actual meals. Uh, three things I do all the time is I bake potatoes, two, two to three potatoes for myself a week, two cups of pasta and two cups of rice. Not only does it help me as a diabetic, those are uh, starches that, that uh, are carbs that really spike my blood sugar. Uh, they will um, somehow reduce the glucose spike by 40% if you cook them, cool them, even if you reheat them. I don't know the science behind it, but it seems to work. And I have to, I take less insulin when I do that. So just having those three things, like I could make a quick uh, shrimp stir fry, frozen shrimp in my fridge, a bag of, of vegetables, whatever, chop them up and make a quick uh, fried rice. I'll leave a link down below for my fried, uh, fried rice recipe. Uh, baked potatoes, you can shred them and make hash browns. You can dice them and put them in soup. Uh, so many possibilities and they're fully cooked so it doesn't take any time to reheat them and then pasta most of the time pasta the it's just waiting for the uh, water to boil so on the weekend I just, I'm just there's my kitchen right there this is my office um, I'll just put a pot of water on and make two cups of pasta and then I just drain it spray with a little bit of avocado oil spray so it doesn't stick together uh, and then just put it in a ziplock bag I can even take a half a cup out throw it in my soup or you know whatever. Um, so don't overcomplicate things, and not everything has to be from scratch. I for the longest time when I first started, well I've been on Weight Watchers for since 1999. Yeah, 1999. Um, for you, those who don't know, uh, me and my twin sister started in 1999, and I was not in it. I was like, I don't, I don't want to do this, but she wanted to. So I was like, okay, I'm just gonna go along with it. So uh, change nothing. Hannah and I lived upstairs, she and her family lived downstairs, and I was making pizza and cooking bacon, and Jen's like, I was like, it's for Hannah, don't don't worry about it. So that very first week, um, I went to step on the scale, and I was like, I'm screwed, and they said I lost five pounds, and I was like, oh my god, I'm like, all I had to do was just say that I'm, you know, I'm Weight Watchers and the weight falls off, but at the time, I did not know that I was an undiagnosed diabetic, so I had rapid weight loss excessive thirst, excessive urination, but I all those things I attributed to just Weight Watchers. Uh, so that was kind of a wake up call once I finally got diagnosed as a diabetic that I really needed to get my health in order. So I lost, we both lost 70 pounds in about 15 months and I kept that off for years. And uh, it wasn't until my husband got sick in 2007, until he died in 2014, that his needs came way before mine and slowly about 45 pounds came back on. Uh, never got back over 200, but came close very many times. Um, but I 
I just had to make this a lifestyle and not think of it as diet because people my age, just the diet culture that we grew up in is um, work out really hard, eat hard, hardly any calories, you know, and we just have to get rid of that. I don't eat anything fat free, nothing. My cheese is real, uh, my bread is real, I make sourdough, I eat that. Um, and I think if you just eat real food, you'll, you're more satisfied than just trying to like, somebody said, oh, well, with the fat-free cheese, all you need to do is spray avocado spray on it and then it'll melt. No, no, that was just, it's not good. So buy really good, as, as good as you can, real ingredients. And I think eating a little of that is more satisfying than eating more of the fat-free shit that tastes like gas. Um, so those are my tips and I, um, the next scene will be my breakfast sandwich. We'll see how that turns out. Right now I'm just about to make some potato bread. It's where you take slices of potatoes and bake it with cheese and it becomes like this potato bread. And yesterday I made it with a roast beef sandwich and this morning I'm making a breakfast sandwich. So uh, stay tuned for that. That's why I've got my mandolin out. Um, and just be very careful with the mandolin because it is very, very sharp. Uh, so the other thing I want to talk about is celebrating non-scale victories um, because the scale isn't always going to uh, show your dedication or what, you're, what you've done. And I mean, how many times have we gone out to eat a couple times a week and it's a day of weigh-in and you're like, oh God, I'm going to be up three pounds and you'll lose a pound and a half and you're like, oh my God, that's amazing. Conversely, if you kill it, you don't go over your points, you still have weeklies left, stuff like that, and then you're up a pound and a half. It's like, bodies are weird. So you just have to take that in consideration. So that's why I only weigh myself once a week, just once a week. Don't weigh yourself more than that because the variables of each and every day is just crazy and it'll drive you nuts. Um, and you have to think of the big picture. So let's just say you lose you know, a half a pound a, a week and you'd be like, oh, it's only a half a pound, but add that up over a year. That's, I don't know how much, many pounds it is. <laughs> hey Google, what is 52 times 0.5? 52 times 0.5 is 26. 26 pounds. You would lose 26 pounds in a year if you only lost half a pound a week. So I think what a lot of people do is they just give up uh, before they let all those little losses add up to a, a bigger number. So that's um, just don't let the scale be your only uh, indication of your success. Are you ready for it? So this is a potato bread that I made into a breakfast sandwich. So it's just got scrambled eggs and some red pepper that I sauteed with it and then just put it in my panini maker. Oh my God. This is like, that's one of the best things I've made in a while. Fantastic. Um, if you like this video, uh, please give it a thumbs up. If you are not already subscribed, uh, we would appreciate it if you, if you subscribe. Uh, but I hope this video um, helped you kind of reframe your mind about your weight loss journey and health journey. That's how I'm looking at it as a health journey, not a weight loss journey. The weight loss is kind of a bonus on it, but um, just uh, let me know in the comments if you have any questions and we'll see you in the next video.